you pick the right stock at the right time. Good morning, you're watching Daybreak on Bloomberg Quint Live and I'm Alex Matthew. First, the headlines this morning. Asian stocks are off to a muted start. Treasury yields move towards the 2.9% mark and the dollar trades steady. The Nifty 50 will be making changes to its index composition. JSW Steel will be the new entrant, while Lupin has been excluded from the index. The Central Board of Direct Taxes has clarified that investors who physically settle derivative contracts will have to pay taxes equal to the cash settlements. T. Rao Price has withdrawn a petition before the Bombay High Court seeking intervention in the manage managing of the affairs of UTI Asset Management. And India's Manjeet Singh and Jinson Johnson won gold and silver respectively in the men's 800-meter final at the ongoing Asian Games in Jakarta. With that, let's turn to the international markets. And US markets ended higher, but only just on Tuesday, with the benchmark S&P 500 and Nasdaq hitting fresh all-time highs, though, as a trade agreement between the United States and Mexico calmed fears of a global trade war. Bloomberg's Sarah Ponzek wraps up all the Wall Street action in this report. Markets were mixed on Wall Street on Tuesday after a pretty light quiet day of trading. It is clearly a summer day here in New York. Many people off the desk. However, much of the focus continues to be on trade. After we got that announcement of the deal between Mexico and the U.S. yesterday, now all of the focus is on what happens with Canada. Are they going to join? And now Robert Lighthizer is saying that he would like to notify Congress of a deal by Friday. So the, the clock is ticking. Christia Freeland is in Washington this week to discuss but it seems like markets are almost in wait and see mode to see what happens next. Now, we are still at record territory in the S&P 500. The Dow once again closed above 26,000 today for the second straight day. So it's almost as if markets are asking what now. So still wait and see. We'll have to keep an eye on what happens with these trade developments through the rest of the week. Now, on the earnings front, we did hear from two retailers this morning, Best Buy and Tiffany, two very different stories as it relates to price action. So if you take a look at Tiffany's, Tiffany's actually beat on sales, also upped its forecast for the year. Tiffany gained about 1% today. Best Buy, on the, on the other hand, although they did beat on both the top and bottom line, what was disappointing there was their outlook for the third quarter. That sent Best Buy down about 5% today, and it was as low as 8.5% at one point in the day. Another area of focus, really is 10-year Treasury yields because last week we were lower at about 2.8 percent. Now they're picking back up. Now we're nearing 2.9 percent and that is putting some pressure on those more rate sensitive sectors. So telecom was the worst performing sector today. Utilities, consumer staples also at the bottom. However, real estate, which is usually part of that group, was the best performing sector today. So a bit of divergences. I'm Sarah Ponsack in New York for Bloomberg. All right, that's how the, uh, the U.S. markets ended yesterday. Do remember that today the big talking point and, in fact, the number that everyone's going to be watching is uh, the U.S. GDP growth for the second quarter. That will come out around 6 p.m. today. Um, apart from that, let's take a look at how the Asian markets are doing this morning. Uh, the early rises had opened positive, uh, but only with marginal gains. Uh, you had the Nikkei in Japan, you have this, the uh, Australian benchmark, and you have the Kospi in South Korea that were all trading positive. As of now, and that continues to be the trend, but only just barely for the Kospi in South Korea. It's given up some of its early gains, it is now trading uh, flat. You have the Chinese markets that have just about opened up, and the few, first few ticks are in, so I won't hazard a guess as to how they've opened. We'll wait for a little bit uh, till the dust settles, but as of now, the first few ticks in uh, the Chinese benchmarks are lower uh, to the extent of two tenths of a percent. You have the Hang Seng that's open just about uh, one tenth of a percent lower in the first few ticks. But with that, let's take a check on how the Indian market is spanning and what the numbers are that you have to look out for. Agam Vakil is here to set you up for the day's trade and also to tell you what's happening in the futures and options space with 
regard to the numbers and the benchmarks, yesterday we talked about the 39,000 mark. We haven't yet gotten there, but we're not too far off, Agam. Well, that said, Alex, a lot of technical indicators are showing that the benchmarks are in an overbought zone. Mm -hmm. So let's see we, if whether or not we can see some more consolidation going in today's job trade. And that's evident in the SGX Nifty. As you can see, it's trading largely flattish. Uh, we're going to have to wait and watch whether or not uh, we do see more strength come through and whether or not the Sensex actually does go ahead and hit the 39,000 mark. Yesterday's day of trade, we saw more strength come through, half percent gains for the Nifty 50. The, the broader market indices weren't up to uh, the, the, the kind of moves that we saw for the broader uh, the benchmarks. And as you can see, the mid cap and the small cap indices were underperforming the major indices. Let's take a look at the Nifty banking index too. That's, that was flat, a decline of around 1.5% for the PSU banking index. And moving in, when it comes to uh, your other sectors, it was a metal sector which well, moved up. Or largely on the back of Hindalco, half a percent gains for the Nifty IT index as well. And uh, let's also talk about the ADRs, and that's where you're seeing some amount of weakness, uh, possibly profit taking coming through, ICICI Bank down 1.6 percent, well, some declines coming for the rest of the counters as well. Let's take a look at some of the other ADRs, and among the others we have Vedanta, Infosys and Wipro, well, for trending positively. Um, Foreign institutional flows along with the domestic institutions uh, saw selling yesterday in both accounts, but it, wasn't really, it really wasn't too much considering the gross numbers itself were, weren't large enough. But when it comes to contribution, it was essentially Reliance Industries that provided the bulk of the gains. In fact, half the gains of the 46 points that we saw was largely on the back of Reliance Industries. HDFC Twins also contributing with Maruti Suzuki not too far behind. Uh, but that's it. Let's take a look at the futures and options space. And it is expiry tomorrow. Uh, we do see expiry come through. Uh, of course, uh, we're starting to see rollovers come through as well. But we're unwinding in the August futures. The Nifty Banking futures too. Well, it remains largely flattish, unwinding quite naturally. And uh, well, when it comes to open interest distribution, as you can see, uh, well, it, it is with with with. with 11,500 and 11,700 puts and on the upside it is now shifted to 11,800 that's the range that we're looking for so the next series will be interesting it will see a higher range the 11,700 was the most active option where we saw unwinding in uh, the 11,700 calls and writing in its puts but uh, when it comes to put call ratio the nifty put call ratio at around 1.94 it's at its highest level uh, since the, the last time it made a higher level was around 1.91 and Nifty Banking Index was at around uh, well, uh, 1.35. But let's move on, take a look at some of the other variables in the one housing finance, IDBI Bank and PNB. Uh, well, uh, enter the FNO ban. On the other hand, two stocks that move out of the FNO ban, Hexaware and Jet Airways, and there are a couple of other stocks that we're watching out for, Equitas Holding, uh, that actually saw fresh longs come through. Uh, and then we also have Apollo Tires, which actually saw fresh shots. And finally, we're talking about Gale, which also saw fresh shots. So mixed cues coming in, Alex. Uh, uh, but once again, we're likely to see consolidation today's job trade. All right. Thanks so much for that, Agam. Well, uh, that's the answer to any of you who were looking for an indication as to how the markets might pan out. And today, that was a trade set for the day in India. Uh, let's move on and take uh, the top story that we're discussing this morning. Any investor taking physical delivery of securities to settle derivatives will be taxed at the same rate as equity settlements. The Income Tax Department clarified in the Bombay High Court on Tuesday that the securities tra transaction tax uh, rate will be apply in such an instance. Sadiq Mangat reports. It's a setback for delivery-based trading in derivative contracts. The tax authorities clarified to the Bombay High Court that the securities transaction tax, which is uh, which will be applicable for delivery-based transaction and derivatives, uh, would be the same as that which, which holds in cash market, which basically means that an uh, investor would end up paying 0.1% uh, for for every transaction that uh, uh, is part of the delivery based uh, deliver, uh, derivative contract uh, this is the same uh, taxation amount or rate uh, which 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 is applicable for cash market transaction where delivery of uh, securities happen uh, this entire clarification comes on the back of a case which was filed by ANMI, which is Association of National St uh, uh, Stock Exchange of India's members uh, against the National Stock Exchange. Uh, the Stock Exchange had uh, asked uh, its members to charge the delivery uh, or, or 
charge uh, STT at a rate uh, of, uh, which is applicable for futures, but on conversion, they wanted uh, a provision to give a higher STT because uh, they, they were pending uh, clarity from the CBDT. The CBDT in its circular has informed uh, the Bombay Stock Exchange that there is no reason why there should be a different uh, STT rate which should be applicable uh, for these delivery based uh, 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 delivery of securities and derivative contracts and so they, uh, they use the same logic of cash market to impose the same uh, uh, rate of trans taxation. Now if you put in perspe perspective uh, if, you, if you're trading in a futures, uh, futures of a stock you pay you end up paying nearly a thousand rupees per crore of transaction value uh, now with delivery based transaction which is part of deriv uh, derivative contracts uh, you will end up paying nearly ten thousand rupees per value uh, per one crore of transaction value so it's nearly a tenfold jump uh, in, in in the taxation which is coming in for that and that that's a big negative because the securities exchange board of india which is the market regulator was trying to align the derivative market with delivery based uh, secure with delivery of securities and as a first phase in March it had our stock exchanges to move some of the illiquid stocks to delivery based uh, and over a period of time it would have aligned it with the cash market going forward with the higher tax rate now it would be difficult for the regulator to impose or align itself to the cash market or get delivery based uh, uh, delivery of securities in the derivative market all right uh, moving on now the nifty's uh, biannual rejig will see just one change. There are also changes that have been made uh, to the other indexes uh, that are run on uh, the NSC. To tell you all about that, I'm joined by Darshan Mehta. Good morning, Darshan. Uh, what are the major changes that uh, we can see? Uh, one Nifty, I think there's only one change. Yeah, so, so the major one obviously is the Nifty because a lot of uh, funds are benchmarked to the Nifty. So JSW Steel uh, comes in and Lupin goes out. They have their set parameters, so it's not a random process. Uh, so but there were two choices, either JSW Steel or Britannia, uh, as per a lot of analysts before the estimates that happened. But it's basically JSW Steel that got in. Now, what will be the weightage? Weightage will be almost 0.76% as per the Edelweiss node. And Lupin's weight currently is a half a percent, which will go down. And, and this will mean that you know a couple of other companies' weightages will come down slightly because uh, they will have to in get that additional 0.26% weightage uh, that JSW Steel gets. Now, what will happen because of this entire transaction is that two and a half crore shares of uh, JSW Steel will be have to be bought uh, till September 28th. This is when uh, the entire uh, the Nifty rejig will happen. It's announced today, but on September 28th, uh, from that day, at the end of that day, uh, the Nifty rejig will be valid. So till that time, two and a half crore shares of JSW Steel will be have to be bought by global funds and 57 lakh shares of Lupin will have to be sold by global funds to make sure that you know they are indices benchmark uh, or mirror the nifty so this is about it and this is as per Edelweiss now in terms of uh, how have uh, stocks reacted since the last uh, you know inclusion of the nifty or uh, this thing so somehow you know history always shows that you know when a company goes out of the nifty they usually tend to outperform the companies which are included and that's the trend that we've seen or though since it was out of the Nifty is up 16%, Bosch is up 2%, and Ambuja is down 1.6%. Now flip it with the companies that were included, except for a Bajaj FinServe and Bajaj Finance, which have been on a tear, which is up 32%. Grasim is down 1.6%, and Titan is down 6%. So, so the trend certainly shows, and this trend has been repeated earlier also, that companies coming out of the Nifty usually tend to outperform the companies that are coming in into the Nifty. So that's the trend that we are seeing. Now other changes also there. The Nifty Next 50 is basically the junior Nifty, which has a lot of these larger companies which which are the next 50 stocks apart from the nifty which are large to them so B bandhan bank biocon icici lombard uh, lupin lupin is excluding nifty it comes here so that's coming in jsw steel moves out of this and moves into the main nifty cummins pfc mami and pnb so these are the counters that have reacted that will come in or go out of the nifty 50. couple of other changes midcap 50 also has its change uh, so pnb moves out from uh, from that uh, from the nifty of uh, junior and moves to the nifty midcap Jubilant Foodwork gets included this time around. Cummins has shifted here. And some of the companies like Biocon, which were included uh, in, in the Nifty Next 50, have moved here. ICFA, IDFC, and PFC, uh, PC Jewelers. So these are the changes that we've seen to the mid cap 50. Some changes to the small cap index also. India Bulls Real Estate finds a mention. Radico Khetan finds a mention.
mentioned, and uh, NIT Technologies, after the stellar run, has managed to take uh, uh, find an inclusion in this. On the exclusion side, HEG goes out, that's a surprise, and Escort goes out. So these are, and, and there are a lot of other names, we just uh, uh, restricted uh, the list to, you know, almost five stocks each. All right, thanks so much for that, Tarshan. Well, clearly, those are the stocks that you have to watch out for. Uh, let's take a check on the rupee and the bond market. Saloni Dhanuka is joining us with all the updates there. Uh, good morning, Saloni. What are you picking up this morning? Good morning, Alex. Uh, so the rupee yesterday bounced back from its uh, record closing low and ended marginally higher at 70.10 levels against the dollar. Now, most Asian currencies also recovered a bit uh, versus the dollar yesterday, largely on the back of uh, broad-based dollar weakness that we have seen uh, yesterday. Well, speaking of the bond market, sovereign bonds ended flat yesterday as a uh, 10-year benchmark bond yield ended steady at 7.9%. Now, do remember that the yields rose as much as 7.92 percent uh, intraday. It's the uh, highest level in more than two months as uh, rising crude oil prices along with a weaker rupee largely weighed on the, the bond market sentiments. Uh, on the global front, the dollar index snaps its three-day losing streak and it now trades marginally higher in the early Asian hours uh, near 94.75 levels. On the economic data front, uh, U.S. Uh, consumer confidence uh, rose to nearly 18-month, 18-year uh, high, pointing that uh, to a strong uh, consumer spending that should help uh, U.S. economy in the near term. That apart, if you see euro, it rose as much as half a percent versus the dollar yesterday before ending uh, marginally higher versus the greenback. Uh, while pound, on the other hand, it trades uh, marginally lower versus the dollar, largely on the back of uh, Brexit deal fears. And lastly, speaking of dollar rupee now, it is trading at 70.21 levels against the dollar in the non-deliverable forward markets, which indicates a weak opening for Indian rupee in today's trade. Alex. All right, thanks so much for that, Saloni. Let's shift focus now to commodities, and Jayesh Kilnani is joining in with all the updates there. Jayesh, uh, I'm assuming you're going to start with oil. That's right, Alex. Uh, in fact, oil did manage to decline about half percent in trade uh, overnight. Now, this is largely on the back of uh, traders closely watching out for the inventory data. Uh, so what we're picking up is that EPI is likely to report an inventory buildup of nearly 38,000 barrels for last week, uh, which, which in fact is confirmed by, if confirmed by EIA will be a surprise inventory buildup. Uh, so that's as far as the oil markets are concerned. But shifting focus to the base metal space, uh, the LME base metal index uh, started trading uh, after a holiday yesterday and, uh, you know, climbed nearly 1%. Uh, and it was a second straight day of gains that we saw for itself. Uh, as far as individual base metals are concerned, aluminium was in particular focused. That surged nearly 2%. And it was a fourth session of gains that we saw for the aluminium prices. Uh, LME uh, copper cancelled wardens, in fact, extended their surge to a one year high, and we did manage to see uh, copper prices inch higher as well. Uh, LME nickel, which was the top gainer in trade, that also surged nearly 2%, and this was also the second straight day of gains that we saw for nickel prices. Uh, while uh, some of the other movers included uh, zinc and tin, which closed positive, and we had lead, which was the only main metal that declined in trade. Now, base metals have seemed to, you know, extended this, uh, ex uh, you know, gain to uh, in the Shanghai Futures Exchange, where most of these base metals are, in fact, trading with a positive bias, except for Shanghai Steel, uh, which is uh, trading largely flat. Uh, shifting uh, to the precious metal space, uh, we saw that gold prices, in fact, inched up above the 1,200 mark, uh, but, you know, fell off uh, from a two-week high on the back of uh, some improvement in the sentiment of the dollar index. All right. Thanks so much for that, Jesh. Now, what are the stocks that you have to watch out for in the news today? Shraddha Bawla is here with a list to tell you about. Good morning, Shraddha. What's on your list today? Good morning, Alex. Uh, so you'll have PSU banks which will continue to remain in focus on account of those uh, ongoing uh, non-core asset sales. So you have SBI, which has said that they've received approval uh, to divest their 3.9% stake in NSE via secondary sale. PNB has uh, offloaded its entire stake in principal PNB, AMC, and principal trustee company uh, in favor of the principal group. Again, this was uh, something that was decided by the board back in last November. Uh, so that deal has been completed. 
you also have HSBC which has initiated uh, uh, coverage on Nalco with a buy in a target price of 90 rupees that's a 20 percent upside so you could possibly uh, see a positive reaction on this one uh, they've said that higher earnings are expected to be driven by volume growth in alumina uh, cost reductions in aluminium production will aid earnings and that aluminium they believe will see some support on account of a tight market balance uh, so that's uh, the reason for their optimism on this stock, watch out for that one. As also TTK Prestige, uh, CLSA has raised the target price from 7010 to 7725 while maintaining a buy that's still a potential upside of 20% from the current levels. Uh, they see it as a play on improving rural consumption and government spending. They also believe that Uchwala implementation will drive demand in core categories for the company and uh, cleaning solutions and exports are uh, what they see as potential growth drivers for this one. So what for that one as well and again you have a couple of companies which will be meeting investors and hence they will continue to remain in focus Kalpataru power transmission will meet HDFC um, AMC on 31st August Mahindra holidays will meet JHP securities today and Mahindra logistics will meet the associates and Edelweiss securities over uh, this week so um, some of these names could remain in focus Alex. all right thanks so much for that Shraddha now 197 communications I don't know if you've heard of that, but a lot of people have. The parent company, it's a parent company of payments app Paytm, and it has reported total losses of more than 1,600 crore rupees in the last financial year. That's FY18. But taking into account the latest investment by Berkshire Hathaway, will it uh, recover some of those losses in the current financial year? Nishan Sharma has all of those details in this report. The losses widen uh, for the parent company of the brand Paytm 197 Communications Limited uh, for the financial year ended March 2018. Now, 197 Communications reported a loss of roughly, six, roughly 1,600 crores uh, as per the filings made to the register of companies. Now, although the revenues for FI18s weren't available, uh, it reported a revenue of about roughly 640 crores for FI17 against a loss of about roughly 900 crores. Now, if you look at uh, 197's uh, external fundraise over the last three years, uh, the firm has raised close to about 10,000 crores in external funding just in three years' time, against a loss of about roughly uh, 4,000 crores. Now, despite uh, mounting losses, uh, 197 Communication, one, sub with one such company which continues to draw a huge investor interest, it already uh, have enjoys the might of Alibaba and SoftBank's Vision Fund. Now, Warren Buffett's uh, Berkshire Hathaway, which has usually stayed away from risky technology private stock investment, became the, the latest investors to partake stake in the company, which is you know yet to come up with a long-term sustainable uh, business model, but definitely enjoys a huge brand recall and some sort of a brand loyalty among the Indian customers. All right, now President Donald Trump says Google search results for Trump news show only negative coverage about him. He added that Republican and conservative fair media, what he calls fair media, are shut out. Now, questioning if this is Ill illegal, he uh, tweeted that this is a very serious situation and it will be addressed. Take a look. Uh, now, there are several stories that you can find if you log on to the website BloombergQuinn.com and of course all the live market action over the course of the day. Uh, admittedly, a uh, low news flow day uh, overnight and uh, taking up from last evening, but here are a couple of very interesting stories that you might find uh, on the website if you log on. First up, US-based fund house uh, T. Rao Price Group, has, uh, which is a foreign shareholder of UTI Asset Management, has withdrawn its writ petition filed uh, before the Bombay High Court seeking its intervention in managing the company's affairs and protecting its investment.
And analysts have lowered earnings estimates of three out of every five companies after the June quarter results. Earnings per share estimates were downgraded for 57% of the 251 companies tracked by at least 10 analysts, according to Bloomberg data. And analysts have raised the forecast for 39% and kept estimates unchanged for as many as 4% of the companies. You find all the details in that story. All right, that's all we have for you in this edition of Daybreak. But all you need to know is up next, so do stay tuned. This is Bloomberg Quint.